Hi guys, this is Jason Williams Dio. This is the Williams Family Medicine Channel, helping you to live your best life. Today I wanted to visit with you about fructose. A discussion of fructose is important as I believe this is a driver of many chronic diseases today. Sources of fructose include honey and fruit in the wild. We also have table sugar and then we also have high fructose corn syrup. When we take in fructose in our diet, our small intestine metabolizes most of this, maybe even 90%. If we have excessive amounts of fructose, then this fructose gets shuttled to the liver and the result is elevated triglycerides and increased fat deposition in the liver. Because of the way fructose is absorbed in the intestines, if you have excessive amounts of fructose, then you also have decreased amounts of calcium and phosphate absorption, which could possibly result in osteoporosis in some. The kidney utilizes fructose for a process called gluconeogenesis, which just means production of glucose in a chemical reaction. So if you have excessive fructose levels, then this can also result in increased glucose levels as produced by the kidney. Fructose happens to be the only sugar that results in increased levels of uric acid. Uric acid is important for many reasons that we will discuss, but at the level of the kidney, this can cause inflammation, scarring, and increased risk for chronic kidney disease. Fructose causes increased sodium levels, as well as vasoconstriction, which means narrowing of your blood vessels. The result of this is hypertension. Fructose also changes the urinary pH level, as well as the metabolism of oxalate and magnesium. And when you couple this with elevated uric acid levels, increases your risk for kidney stones. As we go down the list, fructose also damages the islet cells of the pancreas. These are the cells that produce insulin to help keep your blood sugar in check. In some of my other videos, I talk about metabolic syndrome. Unfortunately, fructose worsens four out of the five markers for metabolic syndrome. Increased weight, increased sugar, increased triglycerides, and increased blood pressure. To put fructose metabolism on another level, if you happen to have a genetic mutation in aldolase B, which is an enzyme that helps to metabolize the fructose, then you will have fatty liver, liver cirrhosis, and progression to liver failure. Of course, fatty liver is a big deal and is very prevalent in the population today. Fructose is also produced in the liver by what is called a polyol pathway using sorbitol. In this pathway, the enzyme aldolase reductase converts glucose to sorbitol. Sorbitol dehydrogenase converts sorbitol to fructose. Therefore, the more glucose you have, the more fructose your body will produce. Glucose also happens to improve the absorption of fructose at the intestine. We have already listed some menacing health problems that develop with fructose. So why do we actually have fructose and why do we generate fructose in our body? It is possible that fructose can aid in our survival in times of scarcity. We'll list off a few functions of fructose with their survival benefit and then the derangement that results if it's overstimulated. In times of scarcity, if you do not have enough energy or water, then fructose can help generate both of those with ATP production and water production. This occurs through fat and glycogen storage increases. Of course, overstimulation in this area will result in obesity. Fructose can help us to sustain our blood sugar levels and increase blood flow to the brain for energy and thinking but of course, increased glucose in the circulation will result in diabetes in some. Fructose causes sodium retention and vasoconstriction or tightening of the blood vessels, which can help us if we are prone to low blood pressure from not enough intake. But of course, if this goes haywire, then we have high blood pressure. Fructose has been found to increase interleukin-1, interleukin-6, T-cell function, monocyte function. These are all part of our innate immune system which can help us to fight off infection. This is an inflammatory process, but can be helpful. However, if this inflammatory process goes unchecked, this can result in damage to different organs, such as kidneys, and result in hypertension. 
fructose actually decreases mitochondrial function and increases glycolysis. This results in a shift in how you generate energy. Instead of using the mitochondrial function to produce energy, you use a series of reactions that occur in the cytoplasm of the cell, which doesn't require as much oxygen. This can allow you to survive when you have not enough oxygen present. This is exactly what cancer cells love, and therefore this can increase cancer cell growth. This also may play a part in increased dementia. We have multiple types of taste, such as sweet, salty, and umami. All three of these taste functions likely help to drive increased survival. Now I'd like to add in a discussion about salt. Long-term salt use results in increased osmolality, which means increased particles in your bloodstream. This helps to trigger increased function of aldolase reductase, which as we discussed earlier, is one of the enzymes that's responsible for the conversion of glucose to fructose. So increased salt use will increase fructose production in your body. Long-term salt use results in leptin resistance, probably triggered by the hypothalamus in the brain. Leptin is a hormone that is important for regulation of fat storage. If you have leptin resistance, then you have increased drive to eat, decreased basal metabolic rate, and increased weight. It seems like the combination of increased fructose and increased salt is a double whammy. We're not done yet though, because fructose also inhibits proper response to insulin and glucagon-like peptide, also resulting in increased energy intake. Once again, these changes may have a survival benefit in years past. Leptin resistance and hyperosmolality result in what is called the foraging response, which is basically a need to eat and drink. In times past, we had to try to seek out food and water, and sometimes this required quick decisions, impulsivity, and even aggression, as we might have been at risk to get attacked by predators when we were in this process of seeking out food and water. Interestingly, it has been shown that fructose decreases prefrontal cortex of the brain activity by decreasing dopamine receptors. In turn, this results in increased impulsivity. Once again, possibly beneficial if you're trying to survive in an austere environment. In today's world, unfortunately though, this can result in mental health disorders, attention deficit, obsessive compulsive disorders, etc. To bring this to a conclusion, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease affects almost a third of the U.S. population. Obesity and diabetes mellitus type 2 rates have skyrocketed. Rates of hypertension, dementia, and cancer are on the rise. Attention deficit, depression, obsessive compulsive disorder have all increased in incidence. Even gout has been increasing. Earlier we discussed elevated uric acid levels. Uric acid gets supersaturated in the bloodstream in patients that have gout. During a gout attack, the supersaturated levels of uric acid form crystals in joints that cause severe pain, redness, swelling, and inflammation. This condition affects millions of people. When we look at these conditions seen together as a syndrome, obesity, hypertension, gout, diabetes, chronic kidney disease, one wonders what the root cause is and is there one particular root cause of all of this. It seems like fructose and salt are obvious potential culprits. My goal would be to limit glucose, fructose, and salt with this information. I'm doubtful that fruit is the enemy in this case, even though it does have fructose. I wondered about allopurinol as that has been used to decrease gout. Allopurinol is a medication that has been used for years to decrease uric acid levels. Unfortunately, some patients develop a severe reaction with skin sloughing and almost a burn-like condition called Stevens-Johnson syndrome, which can be very dangerous. You can do genetic typing and look for HLA types that predispose to this reaction. You can also use low dose of allopurinol to possibly prevent this reaction, but it does occur in some patients. I viewed multiple articles regarding allopurinol and potential treatment for 
diabetes and metabolic syndrome, as well as gout. I saw conflicting results and I'm not sure that this is something that we can recommend in all patients. Some of the takeaways that I think are important to know is typical lists of foods that contain substances that will increase our fructose level. I'm going to read off a list. For high fructose corn syrup, we're going to talk about sodas, juices, energy and electrolyte drinks, baked beans, barbecue sauce, ketchup, salad dressing, canned vegetables, canned fruits, canned soups, pickles, peanut butter, processed desserts, baked goods, bread, fast food, breakfast cereal, jellies, jams, flavored yogurt, snack bars, applesauce, crackers, cold cut meats, and candy. That's a long list, and there are many others that may not be on there. The other food group that can increase fructose and gout type risk are the purine type umami type foods, and I'm also gonna read a list of those. Organ meats, lamb, beef, pork, duck, turkey, shellfish, shrimp, crab, lobster, anchovies, sardines, mackerel, tuna, salmon, soybeans, peas, spinach, mushrooms, blue cheese, and beer. In other videos, I've talked about the benefit of eating some of these foods, such as fish, for omega-3 fatty acids. It's very difficult as a patient. What am I supposed to do when a doctor tells me I need to eat this and then another doctor tells me I can't eat that? These lists are for your information, not a prescription for what to do. I suspect that the items in the high fructose corn syrup grouping are going to be the most important things to avoid for your overall health. As with my other podcasts, I review multiple articles before I create a podcast. I want to give credit to Dr. Richard Johnson from University of Colorado. He is a co-author in many of the journal articles that I reviewed in preparation of this podcast. He is a practicing physician and also researcher who is very interested in fructose. It seems like fructose and salt are weapons of mass destruction on your health. If you are my patient, I hope you take this information to heart and implement recommendations. If you are not my patient, please see your own doctor for diagnosis and treatment. This is Jason Williams, DO. This is the Williams Family Medicine Channel, helping you to live your best life.